Hey everyone, this is Finity with Real Sith of Genius, here to bring you another tutorial uh, about a different aspect of the game. So, previously I'd made a video pretty much just using music to show you guys the strategies that I use with Galactic War. Um, if you watched it, you would have seen some of it, but this is going to be a more dedicated video to Galactic War giving more explanation as to the strategy that I use. And I know there's a bunch of different strategies out there. This is the one that's worked for me. And uh, we'll go through a galactic war. And if you guys have any questions afterwards, please post them in the comments of the video and we'll answer them as soon as we see them. So let's go ahead and get started then on galactic war. So now before that actually let me show you guys my roster so you have an idea about what i'm working with um galactic war is designed to be a test of your collection not just of your particular pvp group so you want to make sure that you have some depth in your character roster so i've been playing since uh january 1st so right at the start of the new year i installed the game and you'll see that i have a a pretty deep roster for a free-to-play player. Um, I have uh, over 25 seven-star characters. A lot of most of them are in purple gear because I try to focus on those characters first. Got some other extraneous ones here and some that are waiting to be leveled. But this is my group, my composition. You'll want to adapt some of these strategies based on your own roster from now, from uh, time to time, and I'll explain that as we go through each one. But to explain my strategy is I think for some of the longtime players that are having difficulty with Galactic War, this uh, my strategy might fit them more perfectly than a newer player. But some of the little strategies in between will definitely fit the newer players a little bit more. So for Galactic War, my Galactic War and to show you my arena right now, I think I'm sitting at 15th and my arena power is around 39,000 to 39,600. Uh, your arena power helps to determine how difficult your Galactic War is going to be. Uh, we tested it inside of the Rebel base, and it seems like if you go above 38,000 uh, arena power, something right around there, you get the easy Node 12. Um, so if you're able to, I would say try to get above uh, 38,000 so you get that easy Node 12. Um, even if you're not getting it, though, these strategies will still apply to you. It just makes your GW a little bit easier at the end, but it's just as difficult, if not a little bit harder, for the middle nodes because you have higher arena powers that you're facing. So, the way I do it is that the first five nodes tend to be fairly easy. So you'll see that even based on my 39,600 plus arena rating, my first node is a level 70 with a bunch of level 60 uh, somewhere in between characters. So what I like to do is look at my roster and I try to form five groups of five. The reason is that in Galactic War, as you go from node to node, your turn meter will transfer over. So if you end a previous battle with 50% turn meter, you actually start the next battle with 50% turn meter, which gives you an advantage in terms of speed. So it's not necessarily speed versus speed. Um, this is useful, especially if you face like a Jawa engineer droid team. Um, I usually have, when I face those towards the later stages, most like four out of five, if not five out of five of my characters will go even before Jawa engineer can give the droids turn meter and it basically changes the dynamic of the entire fight. So what I like to do in the first five uh, fights is to use five different groups of five in order to try and get them all turn meter. And these are characters that I like to use or may potentially use down the line in the harder nodes. If you don't have that deep of a collection, you'll want to try and diversify as much as you can. Remember that the first node, again, if you look at it, the first node for me is a level 70 with a bunch of level 60s. Um, only two of them are seven star. So you're not looking at a terribly hard node comparatively for my roster. Even with the lower arena power, you would also have the same kind of setup. You would have a pretty easy first node. So you not only want to try and give your characters turn meter, you also want to try and keep your characters as high health and protection as you can. 
So you'll want to use some of your lower characters for these initial nodes um, as much as you can so that you can save your bigger hitters for the harder nodes that will come usually around uh, node 6, node 9, 10, and 11. Okay. Um, after some testing, I have kind of finalized my groups a little bit. Um, I did for a while have a little Excel sheet with a list of all of my characters, and I would mark off all of the characters that I used from battle to battle. Um, but eventually I figured out there, there was sort of a pattern that I would use with mine. Um, you'll also want to try to figure out the best character compositions for your group as well when you're deciding these. So the first group that I use is usually going to be what I call my healer focus group. Um, it's not entirely healers. You'll see that when I make my group, the leader is going to be I'm a Gundy. The reason is that I have two healers that I like to use uh, in this group in particular, which is Barris and Lumi. Even though Lumi's classified as an attacker, she's pretty much one of my healing characters that I'll bring in later on to just toss a heal uh, on characters if they're low. So with having I'm a Gundy as a lead, they have the ability to counterattack. So that really helps kind of the group dynamic here. Uh, I put in another healer that I have, which is the Ewok Elder, who's also potentially useful down the line. So now I have uh, three healers that by the end of this fight, I hope will have turn meter. And if I ever need a heal later on, I'll be able to sub in one of these characters, do a heal, and then I don't really care if they live or die because their whole purpose was just to get heals on my main characters. So you want to be selective on which characters you allow to die and when you let them die. So my intention for the healers, which are Barris, Lumi, and Ewok Elder, are to sub them in whenever I need a heal. And once they get their heals off, then they can go ahead and die because then their heals will be on cooldown and they will take too long in order to get their heals back. With the fifth position, you still need to have some sort of damage uh, in order to take out these groups. You don't want to prolong it by having just three healers. And I'm a Gundy is a decent uh, attacker, but you need somebody a little bit stronger. So I put Jedi Knight Anakin in this group in order to get some damage done. Okay, so let's go ahead and do the first node here. Um, I'm going to stick on this first node a little bit. Just uh, Actually, uh, if some of these things work out, I'll try to stick on this node just to show you guys some other strategies. If not, we'll do it on some later nodes. Um... In the video, you'll see that I liked, uh, I picked the Super Mario RPG music. I do like listening to that while I play Galactic War, so you'll hear it in the background as I start it. Okay. So you started off with some attacks. Uh, nobody is really terribly hurt. I'm a Gundy is basically my lead in this phase, but he's not going to be uh, one that I prolong too much later on. There's some other characters that I focus on a lot more. So him getting damage, not a big deal. If you look at the group compositions, one of the biggest threats is going to be that it, the AI in GW doesn't always use Sidious's uh, AoE early. Uh, his AoE allows you to put uh, dots on different characters. And so that will, inst that will pretty much instantaneously start to remove the protection and the health of characters. And I want these characters to stay up as long as possible. Okay, so Sidious is definitely a character, while he's pretty weak, is one that can cause problems if you let him do too much damage early in GW. So you want to make sure that you monitor him pretty well. Qui-Gon Jinn is another one that he does an ally attack, so you want to be a little bit careful about him. Um, he would probably be the second character that I would want to take out. The other character which you want to watch out for is Mace. So Mace Windu isn't a character that's terribly used uh, in general in Arena. But in Galactic War, if he times his attack with his Expose ability, he can do a decent amount of damage on a character and you want to avoid that. Okay, so some of this will require you to restart based on how the AI works. So you just want to pay attention and work on that. So let me start off by attacking uh, Sidious. With these early phases, you want to try and avoid using any cooldowns so that by the time you get to new 6, the cooldown is going to be up. So, for example, Jedi Knight Anakin has his AoE. It's reusable in 3 turns. The question is, if I use this now, do I think 
that I'll be able to get this cooldown back before the end of the round, so that if I need him in node 6, let's say, his AoE is available. Okay, so you want to always kind of keep all of these things in balance. During the first five nodes, you want to try and use basic attacks as much as possible. Okay, so I'm going to start with the basic attack on Darcidius. Continuing here. Um, this is one ability, like I said, I'm a Gundy isn't a character that I plan on using too much uh, later on. Just because I know kind of which characters I'll use. Most likely it's going to be Phasma, Ray, Qui-Gon, uh, Yoda occasionally comes in there, Geonosian Soldier, Emperor Palpatine, uh, Fives I'll use, Royal Guard, Stormtrooper Han, Jedi Knight Anakin. These are some of the characters that I'll use a lot more often and we'll go through it after this node when I show you guys my roster again. But because I know I'm a Gundy isn't a character that I use terribly often, I'm going to use his special to get defense up for everyone in order to reduce the damage that is received by all the characters. So now they all have defense up and I'm just going to continue. The defense up also forces uh, Qui-Gon to use his uh, Dispel ability, which right now, because I'm facing a low level, doesn't even grant offense up to everybody. So um, it's another benefit of having the lower node right at the beginning. Makes it easier to get all of your turn meter. So I'm finishing Darcidius here. So you'll see what happened right there. Mace actually did his expose on I'm a Gundy, so he randomly got that 20% chance to put it on him rather than one of the other four characters and then he attacked him and took away a fair bit of his protection but because again i'm a gundy is not a character i plan on utilizing too much down the line i don't really mind that he did that much damage so now i go back to focusing on qui-gon okay and you see the counter attack there with yoda uh Qui-Gon did the ally assist attack on Anakin, took away about a third of his protection, but he had the defense up, so the damage wasn't terribly bad, so I'm still in good shape here. Focusing on Qui-Gon again. Okay. So next I'm going to go with Mace. When you're in these fights, though, you also want to make sure you keep track of the healer's uh, turn meter also. Right now, every time I've killed them, I haven't been in danger of Lumi casting a heal and thus negating some of the damage. But you always want to make sure you're watching. I'm kind of starting out fresh here, so I can pretty much take out Mace pretty easy. Barris is kind of a low damage dealer, and uh, if you know Yoda, Yoda has battle meditation which gives everyone tenacity up, but also distributes all of his buffs. I don't want Yoda spreading foresight, so I'm going to use that to get rid of the foresight here. And then go back onto Mace. And now Mace is dead. So let's focus on Yoda now. See, and he did his battle meditation, but no foresight, so not a big issue. Lumi gets counterattacked. So that was my first note. And now I have uh, different characters with turn meter. Most of them are pretty much full. Um, I'm a Gundy and Jedi Knight Anakin are a little bit low, but that's not a big deal. Okay, so looking at my roster now, one thing to remember is that sometimes if the character still is full, it'll be hard to recognize whether or not you use them. So for example, if you look at Actually, all of these characters lost a little bit. Ewok Elder lost a little, so in this case, it's not bad. Sometimes you'll have them still full, but you've used them, so you might want to start at the beginning while you're not sure, uh, tracking kind of the damage that you do, or which characters you've used in each of the nodes. So the characters that I tend to use more often, that I know that I'll use later on down the line because of their abilities. And let me stop the music here while I'm not in a node. <laughs> so... Um, 
Stormtrooper Han is definitely one. You want to try and save Taunters because it does help in a lot of the different phases. And uh, Taunters later on will basically become sacrifices for you. They'll taunt. They'll take a lot of damage. Don't expect Taunters to go from note to note. Um, but I usually just use two, which is Royal Guard and Stormtrooper Han. Qui-Gon Jinn is another character I use fairly often. Uh, a call to assist ability as well as high speed. So he goes fairly often. Tebow is one that I use also, uh, especially in the lead ability. When you're facing groups that are primarily counter-based, if you face a Fives, an Ayla with I'm a Gundy lead, a Kit Fisto, um, I think those are the main counter-attackers, but there's definitely others. Uh, Dooku is another one. Um, having somebody that's stealth, and because stealth doesn't provoke a counter-attack, having a Tebow lead is definitely beneficial. And with his turn meter reduction, you can help to kind of change turn orders also and take advantage of that situation. Geonosian Spy is one that I definitely use. Call to assist plus a lot of damage. Yoda, because I can distribute foresight and also uh, tenacity up, which helps against Emperor Palpatine leads, especially nowadays. Leia is one that I don't use much right now because I'm pretty good in terms of damage dealers. Um, if you don't have a lot of damage dealers, then Leia will definitely be one that you'll want to use. And if you don't have a Tebow lead, Leia is a good counter to those counter teams that I was mentioning because she can stealth herself. So uh, based on your situation, you'll want to consider Leia keeping her more long term. Phasma, definitely one that I'll use all the way through. Um, more often than not, I have Phasma in my lead ability in order to try and get the call to assist leader ability as well as Victory March, which helps to give everybody turn meters so I can get them go get them going about two turns before the other team goes once. Um, haven't used Vader too much lately. Um, I do occasionally use him. He's not one that I prioritize, but he's somebody to kind of keep in mind. Um, Ewok Elder is a healer, so I'll sub him in if I ever need a heal. Savage Opress, I don't use terribly much uh, later on. Dengar, I don't use terribly much later on. Emperor Palpatine, I definitely do. Um, you do want to think about stuns because stuns really do help. And because of his shock ability that negates any taunting, he becomes very, very useful. Rey, uh, pretty much the best damage dealer and my favorite character in GW because she can easily get rid of a character uh, off the bat if you do all the steps right. Admiral Akbar, uh, questionably one that I'll use um, because of his ability to remove debuffs. It depends on the team that I'm facing. Um, he's one that's similar to a healer or a taunter where if I put him in there, I'm not trying to save him from node to node like I would a Ray or a Palpatine. But um, he is one that has some benefits. Fives, he's pretty tanky, so there's no reason for me to concern myself too much with his health and protection. If he gets hit, he does a counterattack. He's a pretty useful guy to put in uh, whenever you need. So if you have him, he'll be useful. He's not going to be one of my top focus, though, as I go later on. Lumi, healer, so she'll be subbed in, and then if she dies, she dies. Tusken Raider, a high hit point damage dealer. He's one that I'll sub in, usually in the non-hard nodes instead of GS, because uh, I want to try and save Geonosian Soldier, who's pretty low on health and uh, protection. I want to try and save him as much as possible because he deals more damage than Tusken Raider. But Tusken Raider deals a lot of damage himself. So usually I'll substitute Tusken Raider for Geonosian Soldier in kind of the node 7, 8, and 10. Where I'm not facing the hard ones typically like 6, 9, and 11. Jedi Knight Anakin. Um, he's situationally entered in. Not one that's a big focus. Old Ben, not a big focus. Jawa, I'm a Gundy, not a big focus. Um... And actually, most of these, as I'm getting lower, are not a big focus for me. They'll usually have maybe one or two uses, but I'll use them at the beginning just for the extra turn meter. Okay, so now let's look at the next group. The next group, and I love the, the name of the Knights Who Say Me. So you have Lumi, Talia, Chewie, Finn, and Boba Fett. So you're not, again, looking at any group that's doing particularly large amounts of damage. You're not looking at a Ray, a GS, or somebody like that. You're not looking at a group that's doing a lot of debuffs. And so you're basically just trying to control a fight. For my second node, usually I use what I call my hit point group. 
So I start off with an old Ben lead. Gives evasion, allows for more survivability. Then I'll put in some of my higher hit point protection characters just to get them turn meter and so because I know they'll survive through the fight. So I'll put in Tuscan Raider, Fives, Savage Oppress, and then I'll put in Tebow. So this is pretty much my standard second group. It's a hit point based group um, just to kind of go through because I know that these aren't terribly large damage dealers. Okay, um, I will be able to show you some strategies with, the, with this one since uh, Tuscan Raider and uh, Fives are both going to be uh, call to assist characters. Okay, so starting off here, when I'm looking at this group, um, the one that actually, and weirdly enough, the one that's going to bother me the most is probably going to be Talia. Um, again, because of the damage over time. Straight damage doesn't bother me as much. It's the damage over time because if it lasts for a while, then you're going to continually take off more damage. I don't know who Talia is going to put it on. Um, this doesn't involve a group that I'm terribly going to keep later on. Tebow is one that I'd like to keep alive for later stages, but it's not a big deal. Um, Lumi, you always want to watch out because of the heal. Um, so that would be normally my second, except for the fact that I'm pretty sure Chewie's probably going to taunt. And if Chewie taunts, then he's going to end up being the second. And I want to try and save Tebow's ability, so I'm not going to dispel it. Okay. So looking at this group, let me start off with Talia. Okay. Now, uh, I'm going to restart after this attack, to sh uh, assuming that his old Ben isn't called, just to show you guys a strategy that you can utilize. Okay. So perfect. So you'll see that I use Tuscan Raiders call to attack ability, and it called Tebow. Okay, so I'm going to restart here. And look at my group composition again. Okay, Tebow was the one that was called because of Tuscan Raider. What I'm going to do is switch the positions of Tebow and Fives. Okay, so it's the same group, except now Tebow is to the right of uh, Tuscan Raider on the screen and Fives is below. Okay, so now let's go through the exact same scenario. Okay, so first turn, Tebow is going to attack Talia. Now, I'm going to do the call to assist with Tuscan Raider. And now you see how Fives is called to assist instead of Tebow. The call to assist abilities are going to be based on the location of the teammate. So if you switch somebody else into Fives place with the same group composition, so if you change group compositions entirely, the AI for your team will change. But if you have the same group composition and you just switch the position of two of them, a different character will be called. So you can use this to your advantage if, for example, uh, you're using, uh, let's say, a Stormtrooper Han, a Qui-Gon. Let's just give a full group here. A Phasma lead with a Qui-Gon, a Geonosian soldier, a Ray, and um, a Stormtrooper Han. And Qui-Gon does his call to uh, assist ability, and he calls Stormtrooper Han, right? Stormtrooper Han isn't going to be the most damage in that squad. Pretty much everybody else is. But let's suppose that you want to get off the most damage at the beginning. You'll want to switch the position of Stormtrooper Han and Rey, and now you get Rey assisting Qui-Gon in that ability. So these are all little strategies that you can use in order to maximize the damage, because in GW, the AI is not random from fight to fight. So if you put in the same group again, again, let me restart here. There we go. Okay. The AI is going to be the same from, from fight to fight if you don't make any changes. So, Talia, I did 21, 2741 damage. Okay, I'm retreating, starting again. Attacking Talia and, oh look, 2741 damage again, okay? So the AI in GW is not random. It's randomized at the beginning. It's basically put into a table, but then afterwards it is predetermined. So what you'll want to try and do, and as you get more practice, it becomes a little bit simpler and sometimes you'll start to ignore some of the little things, but you'll want to try and figure out what these predetermined things are. 
later on as you get to the hard nodes, there's usually a combination where either you can survive with nobody dying, maybe only one person dying, and you don't have to settle for that where you end up having only one person surviving at the end. You play around with the order of the group and try and figure out where to put different characters and figure out that predetermined AI. That is the, it's a little bit time consuming, but as you get more practice, it becomes easier and you'll want to try and do that in order to finish your GW. And GW in particular is your greatest source of day-to-day -day credits. Now with the credit heist uh, coming so often and all these other events, there are additional sources of credit. But from a day-to-day -day basis, Galactic War will provide you the most credit because it provides you uh, over 500,000 uh, credits per day. All right. So let's go ahead and finish my attack here. So I'll work on Talia. Okay, nobody's taking a lot of damage. Okay, I got Talia out. Let's see if Chewy taunts and Chewy taunts. So now I focus on Chewy. And then I'll go to Lumi, then I'll go to Finn, and I'll say Boba Fett for last because Boba Fett has the ability to resurrect himself. And I don't want to be fighting Boba Fett unnecessarily while another character is up. Oh, and I mentioned about using the cooldowns, right? I used the call to assist ability from Tusken Raider. Tusken Raider's cooldown, because I have it omega is two rounds. I avoid using fives because fives has a three-turn cooldown. Um, I'll use pretty much any two-turn cooldown in Galactic War in the beginning nodes. Um, I'll save three or more for later. That's just my personal preference. Um, I could have probably used fives in the opening round and still got it back by the end. So, but that's my strategy because I know I have more characters. If you guys don't have a very deep roster, considering you consider using the three turn abilities also um, in your uh, early stages because you should be able to get those abilities back by the end of the fight. So it's a good idea to to try and speed up these as much as possible in order to reduce the damage that everybody takes. If you are not loaded on a lot of uh, leaders and you don't have like group compositions that work for everybody, consider using Old Ben, Lumi, or Dooku if you have him as a lead. Evasion leads really help in the early nodes because you want to try and minimize the damage that you take. And so evasion is definitely a good way of doing that. And you'll see Boba Fett kind of evading everything here because there was the Lumi lead and he has the evasion uh, buff on. So he's a little bit annoying right now, but still no problem. Okay. So now that's my second note. So my first one was more of a healer based. My second one was more of a tank based. You'll want to try and cater these as much as possible towards the groups that you have. Okay. So now I'm looking at this one. You have a Darth Sidious lead. You have Lumi, Talia, Royal Guard, and Rey. Rey is a little bit powerful. You'll see that she's level 78, kind of in line with the level of the character. So you you do want to be a little bit more cautious about her because she is always going to do a little bit more damage. In addition, you see that Sidious, Talia, and Royal Guard are all negative status effect uh, appliers. Uh, Sidious and Talia with their damage over time. Royal Guard with his stun. And so... You want to try and see if you can form a group that allows you to account for that. So for me, a group like this will make me use my Rebel Squad. And I'm actually using a different Rebel Squad today. This is my first time actually going to be utilizing him. Um, so I just got Wedge Antilles up to level 80. He's four star. So I'm going to try and use Wedge Antilles with Biggs. Um, but my other characters for Rebels are going to be Stormtrooper Han. Princess Leia, and Admiral Akbar, And so Admiral Akbar is going to be the key here because if I get damage over time effects, if I get a stun, those kind of things, then I can use Admiral Akbar to dispel them. In addition, I'm also not, not going to use the Stormtrooper Han taunt because Stormtrooper Han's taunt is actually a pretty long cooldown. I believe six rounds, we'll see it. I don't have an Omega, I think, to five or four. And Leia... You might want to stealth, but this group doesn't have any counter attackers. So I'm not really worried about Leia's stealthing ability. The only time I would do that is if, if uh, 
Leia gets targeted early in this match, and then I'll restart, and then I'll make sure to use Leia's uh, stealth. But let me start off by focusing on Rey. Okay, and you'll see that Rey took all the protection of, from Admiral Akbar. He is a character that I may want to use down the line. Okay, so how do I change this? Let me switch characters here, or retreat, and we'll do some testing. Sometimes the AI will target a position. Sometimes the target, the AI will target a, a character. So I am going to switch the position of Admiral Akbar and Stormtrooper Han. This is going to be in hopes that Stormtrooper Han is the one that actually gets targeted because he actually has a lot more defense. Okay, so let's do this again now. So start off with attacking Ray. Attack Ray again. Okay, and now you see Ray attack Leia. So you'll see that the AI on the attack isn't always going to be the same. Okay, so you always want to make sure you're playing around with this and trying to figure out these tables. So what I'm going to do now instead is I'll keep the same group, same lineup. I know that if I attack Ray with Stormtrooper Han, that Han is actually going to trigger Royal Guard. Okay, so Royal Guard is somebody that I need to make sure I pay attention to. So let's start with attacking Royal Guard first and see where Ray goes. And now Ray attacked Stormtrooper Han and barely did anything to his protection. Now I'm not worried about him at all. Okay, so now let's go back to focusing on Royal Guard. Now, I have Biggs, I have Wedge. These aren't two characters that I'm going to be keeping probably for too long um, in terms of later nodes. They're both not leveled up fully. They're not my strongest characters. So because of that, I know I'm not really worried about using their cooldowns. So let me focus on Royal Guard here with their abilities. Okay. Next with Wedge, you see that he has a four-turn cooldown. But Ray also has Foresight up, which I want to get rid of. So let me go ahead and get rid of foresight okay now there's no royal guard there's nobody to taunt off of ray so let me go ahead and focus on ray with leia you have some damage over times here mainly on stormtrooper han that i don't want so i'm gonna go ahead and get rid of those now ray is gone uh there's two healers now in talia and lumi Sidious already did his AoE to apply damage over time, so now I'm not too worried about him. So I'm going to focus on Talia next. Okay. Now, I am I know that if I attack Sidious, if I don't kill him, that chances are Lumi is going to heal. Which, in a sense, is actually good because it wastes Lumi's turn. It doesn't force an attack. So I'm pretty much in a no-lose situation here. So I'm going to attack Sidious. If I can kill him, it's even better. Perfect. So Sidious is dead. Lumi attacks Admiral Akbar, And now I can take out Lumi. All right. So you saw another few strategies here in terms of moving characters around, doing some restarts, making sure that the damage isn't on characters that you're going to want to keep, or you put it on specific characters like Stormtrooper Han that actually have a high defense so they don't take as much damage as Admiral Akbar. Okay, um, so you hear my phone ringing in the background. But uh, that's going to be one of the strategies at the beginning. I'm doing my recording, so I'm not paying attention to the phone. <laughs> All right. So the next one is Finn, Boba Fett, uh, Grand Moff Tarkin, Old Ben, and Rey again. And you see Rey is level 67, so she's not as damaging as the previous one. Um, in this one, there is a decent amount of AoE with Boba Fett and Grand Moff Tarkin. They're a little lower level, though, so again, not a big uh, impact. You have Old Ben not in lead position, so you're not worried about evasion. He does have ability block, though. So you do want to make sure that you're concerning yourself with the fact that ability block will negate your specials. So if you have any groups that are based using specials, you'll want to try and make sure that you somehow work with that and play around with the AI so it benefits you. Okay. 
So I currently have two groups left. One is uh, kind of a Jedi, Jedi-ish team. It's with Qui-Gon, Yoda, Phasma, Royal Guard, and Rey. And then I have another one that's more, uh, that's a little bit more of a Emperor base or uh, Empire base. So it's Emperor Palpatine lead with Vader, uh, Dengar, uh, Royal Guard. Or sorry, I put Royal Guard in the other one. It's uh, Qui- so the first group is Qui-Gon, Yoda, Geonosian Soldier, Rey, and Phasma. And then the other group is Emperor Palpatine with Vader, Royal Guard, uh, Dengar, and I forget who I put in the fifth position. Uh, Jawa. So looking at the current group, because I don't need a lot of stuns, all of these characters are pretty low. I'd rather go with a little bit of a faster, high damaging team and start to take some of these characters out. So I'm going to use my my kind of Jedi team here. So I'll go with Qui-Gon lead with Yoda, Phasma, Geonosian Soldier, and Rey. So I'm going more with speed. You could easily put Phasma in the lead instead of Qui-Gon and try to go for the ally assist. Um, either way, it works. They're both pretty good leaders. So, But this is going to be my group for this particular fight. Again, Qui-Gon's uh, call to assist is a two-turn cooldown, so I don't mind using it. I want to focus on Ray first. There's nobody that does a taunt, so I'm not really worried about the taunting aspects. Okay. Again, try to avoid using specials to try and keep those cooldowns, especially now since I'm at node 4, so I'm getting closer to node 6. Now, if you don't have a deep roster... Okay, so I'm going to try and put caveats for both uh, groups here. So if you have a deep roster, you, you're just using each of these groups once in the first five nodes. You're trying to preserve the cooldown for each one. If you don't have a deep roster, feel free to use your cooldowns on maybe some of the little bit of a harder node. Like the previous one with the Ray and a Royal Guard, you have to deal more damage to Royal Guard quickly so Ray doesn't deal a lot of damage to you. Use your cooldowns on that one. Then if you face a team like this current one, where there's not a lot of damage and the ray is kind of under geared, there's no taunter, then you can start to use uh, just your basic attacks and get your cooldowns back. So you don't necessarily have to think about it in a node by node basis. Like if you have a deep roster, you can think about it in every two nodes. So every two nodes, you want your characters to get a cooldown back and you can kind of figure out the balance based on your own personal roster. Okay, so I definitely killed ray first. Now, I want to get rid of Grand Moff Tarkin next because he has an AoE. I don't care about Old Ben because his basic is pretty low, and if he ability blocks, it doesn't really phase me very much. Um, he gives a buff to everybody else if he dies. with. Uh, so I'll probably do Boba Fett second to last. Um, his res might be a little bit annoying, but he, doesn't give, uh, he won't give... Uh, a buff to anybody else versus if I killed Old Ben first, then he might give a buff to Boba Fett. And if Boba Fett does an AoE, he could do a lot of damage. So I know that my last two are going to be Boba Fett and then Old Ben. Finn will probably be my third kills. And I want to kill Grand Moff Tarkin first because of AoE, because I want to try and preserve all of these characters. These are some of my main characters that I'll use later on. I want to try and preserve their hit points and their protection. Using Geonosian Soldiers called the Sith. It's a two turn cooldown, so I'm in good shape still there. Basic attack with Phasma. Phasmas are all much higher, so I don't want to touch any of her abilities. Okay, focusing on Finn. You see the ability block and the offense down. Not worried about that. Finn hit Phasma. Now, with right in the current situation, and this is part of the reason why I put Qui Gon as lead. If I use his call to assist, he'll do a good amount of damage to Finn, but I have to wait at least one more round in order to get that back. But because Boba Fett has a chance to res, and Old Ben, even though he's not fully geared and just has uh, he has no protection, he still has a decent amount of hit points. So I don't think I'm going to take these out before I have another turn. So I'm going to use my call to assist on Finn. Okay, we have the AoE from Boba Fett. Geonosian Soldier in that last turn got his call to assist back. 
So at this point, I'm just going to go ahead and save everybody's abilities. There's only Boba Fett and Old Ben left. Neither of them is a lot of damage. So I'm just going to keep on rolling with basic attacks on these guys. And Boba Fett didn't res, which is nice. Okay, and you see Old Ben gives himself evasion so he can be a nuisance even at a lower level. But he's not a big damage dealer, so it's not a big issue. Okay, so next, I have my one group left, which is the Emperor Palpatine group. I don't know whether or not this next group is going to be the perfect group for them. But I did the other four and maximized those efforts. So once I open this, we'll see what the group is. But now I'm hoping that I have the right group for this squad. Okay, so we got our loot here. Okay, and you're looking at a pretty simple group. You're looking at Lumi, Chewie, Sidious, who again has the AoE dots, so he's one you want to be concerned about. Mace, who can expose and do a lot of damage. You have Qui-Gon with the call to assist. Chewie has his taunt, Lumi has his heal. Not a terribly difficult group, but also a group that you don't want to take too lightly, even if they're a little bit lower level because of their abilities and their, uh, their ability to actually take away protection without you even realizing it. So I have my last group left which is Palpatine lead, Vader, Royal Guard, Dengar, and Jawa. So I actually still have a lot of characters still left. I didn't use Hoth Rebel Scout. I didn't use uh, IG-86. I didn't use, and these are my seven stars. I didn't use uh, the original Han, the Han Solo character. I didn't use Jedi Knight Council, or Jedi Counselor. Um, I didn't use... Uh, Darth Sidious. I didn't use Daka, who's a 73, who I used to actually use a lot more. The one thing I would recommend against is using a Suicide Squad in later note. Um, I would rather you guys play around with the AI to find the best group, because if you use a Suicide Squad, the same thing that we're doing right now in order to build turn meter to give your team an advantage is what you are providing the opponent. If you use a Suicide Squad, that team will keep its turn meter when you send in your A squad or your B squad. So the suicide squad actually greatly hurts your efforts of your A team. Okay, so you want to try and play with the best group that counters the ability of your opponent and do that on the first shot rather than using a suicide squad. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead with this group now in node 5. So, going along with the same uh, order as I did last time, right, which is going to be uh, Sidious first, then I want to target Mace or Qui-Gon, depending on the turn meter, but chances are Chewie's going to taunt, so then I'll deal with uh, Chewie. If by that point Mace has already done his thing, I'll probably go Qui-Gon, then Mace, then Lumi. Okay, now looking at Emperor Palpatine, He's a little bit of an interesting situation. When you play him, you'll you'll figure it out a little bit, and I'll keep monitoring him as I go through. Stunning really helps in order to obviously reduce the damage that you take, since everyone will hopefully be stunned if I use it. It has a four-turn cooldown, though. But Emperor Palpatine actually gains a lot of speed as you start applying shock everywhere. So my goal is going to be to stun everybody now to kind of preserve everybody else in this group because I do use Royal Guard. He's a taunt, so I want him to be maximized. I do use Emperor Palpatine, and I can occasionally use Vader depending on the situation. Okay, so just for this one, I'm going to start off with a stun. Let's see how many I can get. And I only got one anyway, so it wasn't really worth it. Um, probably best if I restart, but I'm just going to stick through this. Actually, let's, let's do that really quick. I'm going to restart. So you saw what happened, and we'll see if it changes. I used the AoE stun, and Sidious did his AoE uh, damage over time. Let's see what happens if I just use his basic, because the AI will change, um, may not change the ability, but the AI table, you're picking from a different uh, set of responses, if I use a basic attack on Sidious versus using the AoE. Okay, so let's see what happens if I attack Sidious. Okay. So now Sidious got attacked, and I actually am able to kill him off first. Perfect. Okay, so everything kind of changes. Again, the goal of GW is to try and get 
to node six in those first five nodes the goal is to try and get to node six with your main troops as intact as possible with their abilities up don't forget about the abilities because the abilities can change the fights very very quickly okay so you'll, you'll see that some of the different ai plays that i made here hopefully you can utilize these as you guys are going through your gw and it makes it a little bit easier okay so now i have uh jawa hurt a little bit but he's not a character that i plan on continuing too much so i don't have to switch his position with somebody else in order to try and take that damage okay so i'm going to keep on pushing forward now i have royal guard who has a chance to stun i mentioned before that i want to try and avoid chewy's taunt chewy isn't a dangerous character but his taunt is distracting so i am going to try and stun him perfect now i want to try and avoid mace doing his expose on uh, one of my characters at the same time so i'm focusing on him they're still targeting jawa mace did his expose on palpatine but attack uh, attack jawa so that's even better so i'm up to emperor palpatine the shock ability uh prevents any kind of buffs coming on a character so i have chewy stun but i want to try and make sure he doesn't taunt again later on so i'm actually going to try and shock perfect so now I can show you guys. So you can see Shock, he can't gain any healths, any buffs, or any turn meter. So now Chewy is a non-factor, right? Even if he taunts, and the AI actually has him taunt uh, a lot of times, the taunt is going to be ignored. He's not going to actually be taunting. So he's basically going to waste a turn now. So I'm going to go back to focusing on, uh, on Mace. But I'm up to RG, and Royal Guard has a stun available. I want to avoid any healing, so I'm actually going to try and stun Lumi here. Okay, and I only got speed down, so I'm not too worried about that because I think I can kill off the other characters first. I'm going back to focusing on Mace. Going to go and focus on Qui-Gon. Perfect. Now, remember I said, because the shock is up, Chewie's going to probably try and taunt. The taunt isn't going to be effective. He's basically going to waste a turn. There's no reason for me to really focus on Chewie at the moment, so I'm going to actually go after Lumi. And Lumi got stunned, which is even better. Okay. And Chewie got stunned. And there you go. Okay. So now I have ended my first five nodes, which are relatively easy groups compared to my level, and they should be the same way for you. And I am in a good position. Now let's look at node six. So node six is going to be the first group where you start to get a little bit more difficulty. Okay, so I have Dooku, who's going to be fast. I have Qui-Gon, Ahsoka, Fives, and Savage Opress. The two danger points in this are going to be Dooku and Fives because they counterattack. Qui-Gon is maxed out. He's going to do a lot of damage, so I do need to make sure I look out for him. Ahsoka can do a lot of damage she's not a big threat and savage opress is really more of a threat if you actually start to get your characters low so you always want to make sure you're kind of monitoring the damage of everybody and whether or not savage opress will be a danger he also will gain turn meter whenever you attack him so you'll want to make sure that you're careful about when you attack him how you attack him those kind of things but like i said my main focus is going to be on dooku and fives they're both counterattackers. So when I'm looking at this group, because I have two counterattackers, I'll want to put in Tebow. Okay, this gives my characters the ability to stealth, which then uh, allows me to not get provoked by any uh, counterattacks. In addition, if they're not stealth, I do want to have a backup plan. So Royal Guard is a good one in this situation also, so I can get that extra stun. If you have Daka, Daka is going to be a good person in this position. I'm going to save Emperor Palpatine, but Palpatine is also another one that you can use in this position. Okay, so you always want to make sure you're kind of keeping these things in balance. Okay, there was no taunter on the team, so I'm not too worried about the taunting aspect. I don't need a dispeller. Um, so I'm also going to try and go with more damage. So I'm going to put in Geonosian Soldier, and I'm going to put in Ray. So I get that those damage effects. And I'm going to use a character that I haven't used yet. We'll see how it works out. I may need to switch him out. But I'm going to use Original Han. He's not a character I used in the early stages. But with his passive ability, 
he gets first turn no matter what and the chance to stun. Which makes it so, one, I don't really care if he lives or dies because he's not one of my main characters like I mentioned. But two, he doesn't need turn meter because he gets that immediate stun. He's pretty much viable in GW for kind of a one round thing, even at five star. So if you guys have him unlocked, consider using him, even at five star, even though he's fragile. That early turn stun is pretty beneficial against a character like Dooku, for example, who doesn't have a lot of hit points, but his main ability is counterattacking and getting off more attacks and trying to get off that stun early. So this is the group that I'll go in with. We'll see if I need to modify anything based on how the AI goes. Okay, so like I mentioned, uh, Dooku, I want to try and avoid as many counterattacking as possible. So I'm going to start off with an attempt to stun Dooku, and it worked. Okay, so now I'm up to Royal Guard. I am on node 6. I am no longer worried about trying to preserve abilities. Okay, I want to try and keep them as high as possible in terms of uh, damage, in terms of health and protection. So I'm going to use defense up because Dooku is already stunned. So there's no point in me trying to stun Dooku again, and he's my focus. Depending if I had a higher hit point group. So for example, if I had Tusken Raider instead of a uh, Geonosian Soldier, if I had a Fives instead of Ray, I may try to stun a character like Qui-Gon instead. It depends on the depth of your group. Again, because I know I have a deep roster, I'm not too worried about having any character go down a little bit. So I'll continue to monitor the damage, right? But in this case, I'm going to use Defense Up. Okay. Tebow you'll see he has his stealth. When he has his stealth, on his attack, he can reduce turn meter. I'm more worried than anything about Qui-Gon because of his ability to give offense up and his call to assist ability. So I am actually going to try and remove Qui-Gon's turn meter and it worked. Okay, so now Qui-Gon is back down to the bottom of the order. I'm gonna continue to focus on Dooku again. So let me go ahead and get Dooku. Okay, now Dooku again has uh, is back up, but his turn meter is pretty much gone, right? So he has a little bit while before he's going to come back up. So I'm actually going to focus on Ahsoka now. Okay. Now, I'm going to restart here in a minute, but here's what I, I, I did and then I'm going to kind of undo later on. You'll see that when I attacked Ray with Ahsoka, he dodged, or she dodged, right? And that's because of the Dooku lead. Dooku lead gives evasion to everybody, and you'll face that as you go through your notes. The one thing that I didn't do is use leverage, because leverage would actually have given me foresight, okay? And I intentionally uh, attacked Ahsoka for that reason. We'll use the same group and go through those same uh, steps again that I just mentioned, okay? So I'm going to stun Dooku as soon as I can. There we go. Get defense up. Remove Qui-Gon's turn meter. Attack Dooku. There we go. So now I'm up to Ray. Now, Dooku will counterattack if I attack him at this point, Ray. But with Ray's leverage, I will make sure that I gain foresight. Which means that even if I attack and I don't kill Dooku, and it's possible that I can kill Dooku, then Dooku will counterattack and his first attack will actually take off the foresight. His second attack may do damage, but it's not going to be a lot of damage because Dooku isn't a massive damage dealer. He deals more in quantity, not quality. So because of that, I am going to now leverage Dooku. Okay, and you'll see Dooku counterattack. Oh, so I didn't pay attention to that. That's my fault. So Ray actually doesn't get foresight because she had the defense up buff. Okay, and so I'm going to actually change orders again just to kind of keep this in mind so you guys can see everything, right? So I didn't read that fully either. So because I got offense up, Dooku actually got two attacks and took away about half the protection of Ray. Even on note six, I want to try and avoid that. So I am actually going to retreat again. And obviously I'm going through my steps. Sometimes I make little mistakes like this. I'm sure you guys will do the same thing. Um, main thing is that you understand why these different things happen and you try to devise a strategy that works best for your group. Okay, so I'm going to start off again, same thing, Dooku being stunned. 
my difference will be, and we'll see how the AI changes, I'm going to actually go ahead and stun Qui-Gon. Okay, now, Qui-Gon is stunned, Tebow is not stealth, so I can't remove turn meter, so now I can just go ahead and attack Dooku. GS is back, so I can go ahead and attack him. And now, Ray doesn't have any buffs, and Dooku is no longer uh, stunned, so he can counterattack. So now I'm going to use Leverage. You see that I got Foresight, but I also killed Dooku, right? So now I'm pretty much set. Qui-Gon is still stunned. He's going to be my main focus. But because I have a stealth Stormtrooper Han, I'm actually going to attack 5. Ahsoka does her thing. Now, I'm again Royal Guard, right? Royal Guard has the ability to stun. So I'm going to actually try and stun 5s. And because of the passive ability uh, or the leader ability of Dooku, 5s got offense up. Qui-Gon is still stunned. So I'm not as worried about him at this particular moment. So I'm going to, because GS is stunned again, I'm going to go after 5. Savage ate the Foresight. 5s attack. Okay. So now I saw this. And now Ray again lost more protection. I want to try and avoid that. So I'm going to actually go back. And again, the... It's a little bit of a time consuming. This will go faster usually because I'm explaining things, but um, you do, I would say that GW, because of the amount of credits that you get, especially if you're at the beginning of your uh, learning in this game, take the time to figure out GW. You figure out character strategies, you figure out different abilities, and it really helps to learn the game. Take it as an opportunity to learn the abilities of your character, the ability of opposing characters, figuring out strategies to beat those characters, even when you had the advantage. There's a lot of different things that you can gain out of doing GW, as long as you set aside time. And I know time is an important aspect of this game, and it can be difficult. But it is worthwhile. Okay. So, again, I see that he's stunned. So, and... Uh, Han is going to be stealth, but I want to try and do a little bit more damage this time, so I'm going to give everybody crit chance up. Let's see how this changes the AI. Okay, so Ahsoka attacked. Let's give Fives another stun chance. There we go. This time I actually hit the stun on Fives. So fives is stunned, so I can freely attack him anyways. Savage Opress did his damage. Okay, so the reason I didn't attack Qui-Gon when he was stunned is because I knew Rey was coming and Rey has her flurry. So I'm hoping that he doesn't evade, and he didn't, and I almost took out Qui-Gon entirely with Ray, right? So you want to make sure you know kind of how your group is compiled and what's the strengths and weaknesses. Um, looking at the turn meters, their group is really, really far behind. So with GS being stunned or stealthed, I'm going to attack fives. Okay, again, because he's stealthed. Attack fives. On solo, I'm going to try and take out Qui-Gon. There we go. Now, I'm coming up to Rey. Rey isn't stealthed. Um, even though she has foresight and she doesn't have the slow debuff, she, she would be able to attack five. But I want to attack Ahsoka now, just because I, I don't want to take any risks. Okay. So now you're looking at... Ahsoka, Fives, and Savage. I have a stun ability up. I'm going to try and stun Fives again. Got it. Okay. I have turn meter. I have stealth on Tebow. So I'm going to try and remove the turn meter of Savage so that he doesn't go again. And he dodged it. So now if he goes, he goes. Not much I can do. I have Geonosian Soldier up. So I'm going to attack Fives. He attacked Han. Not worried about him. Like I said, he's kind of a sacrifice for this particular uh, node. Um, if you have a character that you don't want to die, I would definitely recommend restarting at this point. But I'm just going to keep on rolling here. Okay, I'm going to try and stun Ahsoka. Can you get Ahsoka stunned? Let me see if I can finish off fives. Okay, so now Tebow is not stealthed. 
five is no longer stunned. I don't think his one attack will be able to take him out, so I'm going to attack Ahsoka. Ray might be able to finish off uh, five, so let me see if I can... And he dodged, of course. Okay. If I attack fives with Han at this point, it's pretty much a suicide, so I'm going to attack uh, Ahsoka. Savage killed him anyways, but I wasted his attack, which is what I wanted. See if I can stun him. Perfect. Now, Ray is probably overkill on the damage to five, so I'm actually going to attack Ahsoka. Yeah, that was de that definitely would have been overkill. Got rid of fives, and now I can focus on Savage Press. Now, he gains turn meter every time I attack. So you do want to always make sure you monitor that. But at this point, it's just getting through the damage. I'm trying not to use any specials. If I use some of the specials, like with GS in the last turn, I could have used his Swarm and gotten it. Uh, again, some of these decisions are because I know my roster. So you'll want to make sure you pick decisions based on your roster. And if you don't have a deep roster, use that call to assist ability on, fight, on uh, GS. All right. So I lost Han, but he was kind of there as a sacrifice, but it was not a suicide squad, right? So the node is done. I'm not giving anybody extra turn meter if I have to attack them again. So that was my layout. Okay, so now I'm up to node 7. Node 7 is a little bit easier. Um, again, not something to sneeze at though compared to 1 through 5, right? So you want to make sure that you're still kind of focusing on the abilities of the group and how to counter these different things. So you have Mace, again, his exposed with his attack, it can do a fair bit of damage. You have Ray, who obviously does a lot of damage. You have a 7-star Leia, so once she stealths, she'll be doing a lot of damage, so you'll want to make sure you watch out for that. You have uh, Asajj Ventress, who can kind of stun you. She's a little, she's not too dangerous, just somebody to kind of keep an eye out, but she's not going to be a primary focus, usually. And then Qui-Gon with his call to assist and his ability to dispel. Okay, so looking at this group, I'm now going to start forming kind of a hodgepodge for each of these to try and counter it. So looking at this group, there's no AoE, but there is a good amount of speed that I want to be cautious about, especially with Ray and Leia as being the main damage dealers. So I'm going to stick in Qui-Gon. I'm also going to put in Geonosian Soldier. I'm going to put in Ray. So I have that speed kind of ready to go, right? Um, Mace can deal a lot of damage. Not a big impact that I'm worried about, but he's going to be one that I focus on. Um, I want to try and save some of these cooldowns, so I'm not going to use Phasma. Um... But looking at the rest of my group, I'll probably go with Tuscan Raider. Actually, let's go back to the other team and see if they can hold up. Let's go with Wedge and Biggs. Since I just got them, I want to test them out. Okay, so I want to try and get a little bit more speed, try to get some of this damage out. Okay, so look at the turn meters. Leia is usually going to be the fastest character. But right now, she's behind a lot of mine because I already gave my turn meter. That is the key thing that you guys want to remember as you're going through GW. It changes the entire dynamic of the fight. So I'm going to focus on Leia first because I don't want her to stealth. And there goes Leia. Okay, now I want to focus on Ray. Ray has 50% turn meter. So the question is whether or not I need to use a special in order to take her out in order to prevent more damage coming onto me. I think I'm okay without using a special. We'll see. So I'm just going to go with the basic. Perfect. Okay. So now I've gotten out the two big damage dealers. Ventress is probably the one that I'm going to leave for last. Um, Mace has the ability to use his expose. However, if he exposes and attacks Biggs or Wedge, at this point, because they're a little bit more sacrificial for me and just more fun to play with, um, I don't really mind him using it on them so i'm just going to kind of monitor what mace does but i'm going to focus on qui-gon first so qui-gon dispelled so now everybody has offense up so i do want to make sure i'm monitoring where everybody else attacks i'm going to try and get rid of qui-gon using the swarm and let me go back to basic on mace okay 
So Mace did a good chunk of damage onto Geonosian Soldier. So at this point, I have the question, do I want to keep this or do I want to change it? I think for the purposes of this, I'm going to change it. And I mentioned before that a lot of times because uh, Geonosian Soldier doesn't have a lot of hit points or protection, he's just a lot of damage, I like to sub him out for Tusken Raider. So I'm going to do that in this fight and we'll see how this goes. Again, he has turn meter, so the speed of Tusken Raider still isn't something that I'm, I'm worried about because he has turn meter. The goal is to try and get them to go at the beginning in order to try and get all of these different attacks in. Okay, so I took out Leia. Now I'm focusing on Rey. And Rey is dead. So now let me focus on Qui-Gon. Best part about this is now without Geonosian Soldier giving himself offense up, Qui-Gon, their Qui-Gon, not mine, is probably going to try and remove the Foresight so now the characters don't get offense up. So now the AI changed completely because I switched out Geonosian Soldier for Tusken Raider. Okay, and let me turn on the music here while I get my charger so my phone doesn't die while I'm doing this here. So give me two seconds here. And I'm back, and I'm plugging in my my charger. So that's another thing to consider too, by the way, as you guys are playing uh, GW, and if it takes an extended amount of time, especially right now since I'm working on the stream also, it's using up a lot of my battery. So make sure you bring a charger. Always a helpful tip. <laughs> All right, so now let me go back to attacking Qui-Gon. Okay, so Mace ate up the Foresight, but Qui-Gon only uses his call to assist on Tusken Raider, who has a lot of hit points and is basically just a sub-in during these middle rounds, so I have no issue there. Asajj Ventress attacked Biggs. Again, not a big focus on, on my group later on, so I'm in good position. Working on taking out Mace. And Mace is gone. So you'll see that now, compared to the other one, my Geonosian Soldier, who's one of my primary characters, still has his health and protection because I didn't use him. My other characters are still in pretty good shape. The only one that took a little bit of damage was Biggs, but Biggs also isn't a primary focus. If you used a squad that was uh, a focus of yours, you would want to then try and find another combination, or maybe switch the position of Tusken Raider and Biggs so that... Tusken Raider might get attacked a little bit more. Something like that, right? You want to try and change up the group, comp the composition being the same, but change up the group orders to try and get different uh, people targeted. So going back to Ventress. And now Ventress is dead. Okay. Again, uh, the Wigs combo is just one that I'm playing around with. Um, but you'll see that even a few high characters with a couple of low characters can pretty much take you through a lot of GW. So if you don't have a lot of high level characters and you have a bunch of like mid, mid developed characters in terms of gear and star, they can still be dragged along like I was just dragging along uh, Wedge and Biggs by having a good Ray, a Qui-Gon and a Tusken Raider or a Geonosian Soldier you could have or somebody else. Right, so play around with those group combinations. Don't settle for any characters dying unless you know for sure you're not using them, like I did with my Han Solo in the earlier stage. Okay, so now I'm looking at pretty much a Jedi squad. I'm looking at Mace with Sidious, uh, Yoda, Lumi, and Qui-Gon. So you have damage over time with Sidious that you do want to make sure you're concerned about. You have a lot of Jedi. Which means, off the bat, I'm thinking I'm going to use an Emperor Palpatine lead. Just in order to get that uh, that less evasion on everybody. My focus would probably be on uh, Sidious at the beginning. Just so I can avoid having any of those damage over time. I do want to make sure I'm monitoring Yoda. Because Yoda can distribute Foresight. And that will kind of delay everything on me. Don't want that happening. 
and Lumi has the ability to heal, and Qui-Gon, again, ability to give offense up, and the ability to call for assist. So he can actually be pretty dangerous if left alone. Okay? So, thinking about a group to kind of counter this one, I'm thinking it's going to be somewhat similar to my group, my uh, hit point squad, with slight modifications. Okay? So, I am going to go with an Emperor Palpatine lead. I'm actually going to use Vader. Okay, um, let's see. We probably want... Let me look at the group again. Okay, so we have Mace, Yoda... Okay, so I do want to have some speed damage on here. So let's go with Geonosian Soldier to add to this. Um... And let's go with Tusken Raider and Jedi Knight Anakin. So this kind of rounds out a good amount of damage. Some uh, buff immunity with Jedi Knight Anakin and Emperor Palpatine. So I can kind of stop some of the offense up potentially. So you have a lot of different things going on here. But it's basically a group that I'm hoping will counteract the Jedi group here. Okay. So again, my primary focus is going to be on Sidious because I want to try and avoid those uh, dots. But I'm going to start off with an AoE because there is no Dispel on that team. Uh, again, stopping those dots. Let's see if I can hit Ability Block. And I did. So now Sidious is Ability Blocked. He's not going to be able to do his dots. I bought myself an extra turn. So, because I bought myself an extra turn, I'm probably not going to focus on him at this exact instant. I have a high damage attack with uh, Geonosian Soldiers called Assist. So, I'm actually going to try and take out Yoda so he doesn't spread Foresight. See if I can put Shock on him. And I shocked Yoda, so now Yoda is definitely not going to be able to apply uh, Foresight to anybody because he can't gain any buffs. So, I'm back to Geonosian Soldier. And... Because I'm the dot's going to kill Yoda, I'm not going to worry about Yoda. I'm going to go back to focusing on Sidious. Okay. I'm um, going to try and save his uh, Culling Blade. Just because it may come back. Worried about Qui-Gon with his abilities. So let me see if I can ability block him. And I did. And let me see if I can take out Sidious. And Sidious is done. Okay. So now let's see. I'm going to try and save Anakin's abilities again. So let me see if I can take out Mace a little bit here. Okay. Alright. So you see that Lumi did her heal. Her heal only affected two people. Mace is still on his way down. So I'm just going to kill off Mace here. And then focus on Qui-Gon. Minimal damage from Qui-Gon on Palpatine. Keeping focus. Good. Got turn meter reduction on Lumi. So now Lumi's pretty much dead before she can go again. So it looked like this was a good counter team to that one. Didn't really let them go too many times. Got some stuns, some dots on it, so I didn't really have to focus. So again, try to form teams that counter the team that you're going to face as much as you can. I know that you need sometimes a deeper roster. So you do want to kind of keep that in mind as you're not only farming characters, um, but in terms of what characters you use from node to node. Okay, so now we're going to come to a hard node. Okay, so we're looking at another Dooku lead with Lumi, Qui-Gon, Geonosian Soldier, and Royal Guard. Okay, um, Dooku is a counterattacker. So you want to make sure you're somehow dealing with the counterattack so you don't take too much damage on this node. Lumi will heal, but if you have enough burst damage, you'll be able to overcome that. You have Qui-Gon with his speed, Geonosian Soldier with all of his extra damage, and Royal Guard with the stun. I'm going to go with a little bit more of a speed team here to see how it works out. So I'm actually going to put Phasma as the lead with Qui-Gon, Geonosian Soldier, Ray and Royal Guard. So Royal Guard is going to be my counter to Dooku in this. So you always want to make sure that you would, when you're facing a counter attacker like Dooku or a Fives, that you're using a stunner 
in order to reduce the damage that you take, or you use a stealther, either through a Tebow lead or a Leia, something in order to counter that counter damage. So we'll see how this uh, attack goes now, if I need to restart. Okay, so looking at the turn meters here a little bit, Ray is prob Ray and Qui-Gon are going to be going towards the end, right? But after GS, it looks like Royal Guard is going to go, and then Phasma. Phasma does have her abilities up, because I didn't use them before, so she should be able to victory march, and everyone may be able to go a second time. You have the one taunter in uh, Royal Guard, but if I use victory march, Qui-Gon will be going early, so I can dispel that and continue attacking some of these other characters. So I want to try and figure out who is going to be my greatest danger. Based on that, I'm looking at either Geonosian Soldier or I'm looking at Qui-Gon. So I'm going to focus on Geonosian Soldier first. And obviously through some attempts, we'll, be, we'll see if we need to change it. Uh, and of course he dodges everything because of Dooku. But we'll continue with the attack here. So now I'm at Ray. Let's see if Ray can connect. Good. The spell. Okay. Geonosian soldier is almost dead. Let's see if I can stun Qui-Gon. Got him. Dooku does his attack. And I got him. Okay. So now Geonosian soldier is dead. Next up, let's see if I can focus on Qui-Gon. Now, again, with I've used, I, I kind of, did everything assuming that I knew I was going to remove the taunt from Royal Guard. If I get Qui-Gon down below 50% too early, Royal Guard is going to taunt again, and I have to wait a few turns in order to get Qui-Gon's ability to dispel back. Right, So you want to make sure that you time all your abilities, and in this case, I'm going to try and time it so I can get Qui-Gon as low as possible and then use leverage from Ray. Whether or not it'll work, we'll see, but that's going to be the goal. Okay. So I'm in a good position here against Qui-Gon. Don't have to do too much in terms of the fiddling. So let me start working on Royal Guard. Just so I can, if he taunts again, then I can deal with him. I'm in node 9. Geonosian Soldier took a little bit of a hit. But these are the stages where I'm kind of expecting those hits to come. So I'm still going to monitor how much damage Geonosian Soldier takes. But I'm not worried as much at this node as I was back in node, I think, 6 or 7, when Geonosian Soldier took damage and then I subbed him out for Tusken Raider. Okay, So you want to make sure you're kind of managing not only each individual node, but where you are in the Galactic War as a whole. Okay, So I'm going to now do defense up in order to remove some of the damage. Let me attack Royal Guard again. And let's see if I can take rid of, get rid of Qui-Gon with leverage, and I didn't. Okay, so he's almost dead. Focus on Royal Guard, who I already have a head start on now. Okay, stun him. And he got the heal. So let's see if I can work through this. If it starts to go uh, badly for me, restart it, right? There's no harm in restarting. So you want to make sure that you're paying attention to what's going on in each of the phases. Okay, so Geonosian Soldier dodged. Royal Guard is out of the way now. Dooku hit Foresight with the first, took away some more protection. But now I got rid of Qui-Gon. Okay, I don't have Dooku stunned yet. So I don't want to focus on him, especially because of his ability against Jedis. So I'm going to work on Lumi. And that's until I can get a stun on Dooku with Royal Guard, which I did. So he's at 50% turn meter. Got a little bit more now. Probably shouldn't have done that one. Oh, but Royal Guard taunted. So that's another thing to keep in mind too. So I missed that because Ray went low. When there is a taunting character like Royal Guard or Stormtrooper Han, if you attack somebody that counterattacks, he will actually attack the person that's taunting. Uh, Royal Guard, not as useful. If you have Stormtrooper Han, it is a great time to attack a counterattacker because they will attack Stormtrooper Han, and Stormtrooper Han gives your troops turn meter on every time that he is attacked. So it is actually a strategy to do that. Get your counterattack, get the opposing counterattackers to attack a taunting Stormtrooper Han, 
and your team will start to go much more frequently. But just realize that if you're using a taunter for this ability, that chances are the taunter, so Stormtrooper Han in the example I was giving you, is probably going to go pretty low in hit points and protection. So don't expect to use them too much later on. Okay, so with the taunt of Stormtrooper Han, or I mean with the Royal Guard up, and because Lumi used her heal recently, I'm not worried about her healing as much right now. So I'm just going to keep on focusing on Duke right now. And you'll see that I'm saving cooldowns a little bit now as I'm coming towards the end. Um, neither of these guys are big damage dealers, so I'm not in too big a worry. Um, I'm actually going to try and stun Lumi because Lumi can give herself uh, evasion as a buff with her basic attack. I want to try and avoid that if possible. So, Because once I start attacking her, I don't want her to keep on dodging and prolong this fight. Okay, now Dooku's out of the picture. And now I can get Lumi out. Alright, so that was node 9. We're on to node 10. So now you're looking at a squad. This is, uh, which one? This is Dachka. Okay. Just wanted to make sure it wasn't Jawa Engineer. I'm still getting used to all the little Jawa icons. Okay, so my node 10 is a Sidious, a IG-86, a Ray, a Dachka, and a Lumi. Okay, so you got some damage dealers in IG-86 and Ray if left unchecked. You have the, the Dots with Sidious. And then you have some other characters that can potentially do decent damage, but not really focus on this in terms of uh, in terms of Dachka and Lumi. Okay, so the other thing to remember now, and I can show you guys this, Ray is not at full health. Okay, so now this is an opportunity where you can bring in a healer in order to get your squad, whatever characters are low, to get them healed up. Okay. So, looking at this squad again, you have some dots that you can get from Sidious. So, in this particular case, I'll probably sub in Ewok Elder in order to remove those dots if they're there, plus give my team a little bit more turn meter in order to speed things up. Okay, you have 86, who is a, a, a droid, obviously, and so I might want to actually use Jawa, who I thought I might throw away later. Um, Dashka, not big, too big a concern. You have Sidious. Uh, so I still want a little bit of speed with this team. I want to try and avoid using Qui-Gon, GS, and Phasma. And definitely avoid using a Taunter. Okay. So what I'm thinking about in terms of a leader is maybe going to be more of an Akbar, Who can also dispel in addition to Ewok Elder. So Ewok Elder will be a little bit of a backup. I'll put in Leia since I have... Uh, Akbar in there. We can go ahead and use uh, Tuscan Raider again, who's kind of my go-to DPS in these situations. And then I'll put in Ewok Elder. So let's see how this group goes. Okay, again, it's a little bit of a hodgepodge group, each one with a particular purpose though. So you always want to make sure you're focusing on each character and why you're using them. And again, you'll see that Akbar. I used his ability on his last turn. I wasn't expecting him to use to use him too much, but because I have Ewok Elder, I know that I have the Dispel ability kind of ready to go. So I want to focus on the damage dealers first. So let me start off by trying to get rid of Ray. Again, make sure you know the abilities of your characters. With Akbar lead, if I use a non-damaging attack, another Rebel is going to go, and I only have one Rebel in here, which is Leia. So if I use Tactical Genius right now, Leia attacks Ray. Now I can hopefully take out Ray with this one. Uh, let's see how turn meter is. I think I can take out Ray with either Tusken Raider or Ewok Elder next time. So I'm actually going to focus more on 86. Not Sidious this time because I have two Dispellers in Ewok Elder and Admiral Akbar. Okay, so let me go back to IG-86. Okay. Finish off Ray with Tusken Raider. And Sidious only did his basic attack. So I'm not any worse than I was before. I'll go ahead and save the ability by Ewok Elder. Focus on 86. And now 86 is gone. Okay. 
Again, Sidious, not a big concern. Dachka, I don't really have any droids, not a big concern. So I'm actually going to focus on Lumi next. There. Now, there's two debuffs up. Sidious hasn't gone yet, but I need to make sure I heal Ray before the end of this fight. So now I'm going to use this ability. Ray is at full health. Try to take out Lumi again. All right. So now Sidious did his, but if you saw, Admiral Akbar actually had his ability up. Perfect. So now can remove all those and heal Ray again. So Ray is still at full, and now I have no debuffs to worry about. All the attacks are on characters that I don't really plan on using too much afterwards. Not worried about Sidious, it looks like Dachka might be doing a little bit more damage, so I'm going to focus on Dachka now. At this point though, either one would be fine. Neither of them is terribly dangerous, it's just monitoring and making sure that they're not hitting the characters that you want to keep. And I'm not going to be using Tusken Raider in my last node, so let me use his ability. Okay. And I am done with this. So now, Ray went from having like 75% health to having full health going into the last one. Now, she's still without protection, so you still have to be cautious, but that's a situation where you can see how to use a healer. Okay, now, this group. You have Jedi Knight Anakin, Ray, Fives, Royal Guard and Qui-Gon. Okay, so you have a counter-attacker in fives, you have a taunter in Royal Guard, you have somebody that will attack uh, every time somebody goes low in Anakin, and you have damage dealers in uh, Ray and Qui-Gon. Okay, so you do want to make sure that you do have a balanced group when you're facing this squad. Emperor Palpatine is pretty much going to be my main guy in this, in terms of controlling uh, most of the characters in here. Um, I will want Phasma for the Victory March. And with the Royal Guard or a Stormtrooper Han, who's probably the one that I'll be using, I have somebody to taunt and eat up the Fives counterattack. Okay, there is the Dispeller in Qui-Gon, so I do want to make sure I'm careful about that because Stormtrooper Han's only going to have one taunt uh, through the fight, most likely, since it's a five-turn cooldown. Okay, so the group that I'm looking at now, it's going to be a Phasma lead with Qui-Gon, Rey, Stormtrooper Han, and Emperor Palpatine. So this will be my first group that I go in with. This is a pretty hard group, so I'll see how the AI works, whether I need to switch positions of characters, who needs to survive a little bit more. But again, don't use a Suicide Squad because right now, when I enter this battle, you'll see I have a turn meter advantage to that squad even against the opposing ray right so you want to make sure that you're keeping all of these things in mind when you when you're picking your group in order to attack okay so i'm going to start with anakin let me give victory march in order to get everybody up continue to focus on anakin i'm going to sh try and shock royal guard perfect so royal guard is shocked so now he can't taunt so i can continue to focus on anakin let me see if i can flurry him perfect Okay, um, next let me focus on Ray. Okay, Ray did her attack. Okay, and they're both focusing on Emperor Palpatine. Okay, so now I'm going to focus a little bit more on Qui-Gon because I stunned with Stormtrooper Han. I want to make sure that he gets more damage in. I don't want uh, Qui-Gon getting rid of that. Okay, and with Royal Guard being shocked, Nothing to worry about there. Fives is attacking there, so again, don't have to worry about it. Um, if I use Fusilade, which I will in this case, with Fusilade, I'll now get rid of the Force Side on Ray and Force Fives to counterattack on Stormtrooper Han, which will then give everybody more turn meter. So let's go with that. And it actually missed on Fives, so it wasn't there. But I will continue on Ray here, as she's the biggest damage dealer. I want to be able to stun fives later on, so I'm actually going to put a shock on him, hopefully perfect. And he counterattacks, gives everybody turn meter, and now I go back to Ray. 
and let's finish off Ray. All right. So now I'm at this point where I can either pick Royal Guard or I can pick Fives. I want to go with Fives now because I have the Taunt up. Once the Taunt wears off, attacking Fives isn't going to be as useful uh, in order to try and get my team sped up. So I'm going to attack Fives now. And he double attacks. Okay. I'm going to renew the shock on Royal Guard just to be safe. Continue attacking Fives now. Now, I don't want to stun before the before fives goes below 50% because if I eat if I use the stun the shocks go away and then royal guard will be able to taunt um, even though Qui-Gon's ability to remove taunt is up I'm still going to try and avoid that uh, just in terms of a general strategic play and you'll see that stormtrooper Han is taking damage from fives on all these counterattacks and this is why I was saying when you use stormtrooper Han for this ability against a counterattack it's great for the fight all my characters are in pretty good shape right now. Uh, I should be able to win this pretty easily. The only casualty being Stormtrooper Han, but that's his purpose. Okay, so you want to make sure that you're keeping all of these different things in mind when you're picking your uh, group, what their purpose is, how long they're going to last. At this point, uh, because I know my Node 12 is going to be easy, um, I would normally do Victory March. If you don't have an easy 12th node in this situation, you'll probably want to try and save Victory March for that. So I'm just going to use a basic attack and just continue on this way. Okay, now fives is becoming a little bit of an issue for my Stormtrooper Han, right? Because Stormtrooper Han's about to die. If I attack fives again, Stormtrooper Han is pretty much dead. So I'm actually now in this situation going to use the stun because the dispelling ability of Qui-Gon is going to be more crucial to keeping Stormtrooper Han alive. And he's still a little bit of extra damage. I know he's going to die, but it's still there's still a good amount of hit points left with everybody. So I'm going to actually go for the stun. And now they're both stunned. Okay. If I attack fives with Qui-Gon now, then Royal Guard will definitely taunt, right? Because Qui-Gon is the one that needs to dispel. Fives has no turn meter, so I'm not in any hurry to attack him in order to get rid of that stun. So I'm actually going to try and attack Royal Guard here. Okay. So now I'm in a position where... Royal Guard is pretty much below 50%. He's right around that range. And I'm not terribly worried about uh, getting a taunt up because Qui-Gon is now up to come. So I am actually going to use the Flurry on fives and try to take him out. Okay, he didn't finish, but Qui-Gon is next. There goes, and he died anyway. Okay, so the downside of what I just did is that now a lot of my characters don't have the abilities up. If you have a, a limited roster, you definitely want to make sure that you're paying attention to the abilities, how you're using them, figure out a strategy. For me, I know that I'm coming up to an easy 12th note here, right? So it's not anything that I'm too worried about. And just for fun here, let me just put in Vader and solo this, see if he can solo this. Stick it on auto. Ah, oh, Lobat dispelled all the dots. No fun. <laughs> there we go. Alright. So, depending on what you have in those final nodes, you'll want to try and space everything out. Now, for me, because... Usually a lot of people's node 11 like I had is in their node 12 and you get something in between in the ones previous to it. You definitely want to make sure you work out the different groups that you want to use. Put in characters that counter the group that you're facing. Um, previously in the old GW setup, it used to be that certain teams, and even now it's possible that certain teams can run you all the way through. Um, in the current climate, it's pretty much Emperor Palpatine leads with a Royal Guard and a Daka, and you can basically try to stun your way all the way through, and it's been relatively effective. 
a lot of care a lot of players don't have emperor palpatine because they weren't able to get him um a lot of characters don't have daka also because they might have gone for fives or qui-gon jinn first in cantina so you want to make sure that whatever you do you develop a strategy for your galactic war that fits your group composition i showed you guys a bunch of different strategies inside of this that uh allowed you to see like how what happens if you change uh, people in different spots with the same group composition what happens if you use a different ability how the ai will then use a different ability back so if you don't like the fact that sidious is using his aoe dots that instead you do, uh, instead of your special, you do a basic and then he might only attack with his basic, right? Lots of different strategies going on here. They're all fairly simple once you get the hang of it. And you'll be able to do your GW a lot faster than we did today because you'll be able to avoid me having to explain a lot of things to you guys. And hopefully you found this informative and you got a lot of ideas for your GW. But your GW is a lot of credits and resources for you and so especially as you're starting early on you want to try and get that daily galactic war completed so that you don't have to worry about all those credits about falling behind the people that are ahead of you you want to make sure you get those training droids in order to build up your collection right so keep on working towards those goals okay the ultimate goal finish your gw every single day Try to implement these strategies, figure out your teams, understand your collection, understand their, your abilities. And with that, I think everybody should be successful in their GW. Again, as I mentioned at the beginning, if you guys have any questions regarding GW, any ideas about strategies, make sure that you post some questions in the comments of this YouTube video. Um, we're pretty much checking it. Ranger J1999 and myself are pretty much checking it uh daily if not more frequently than that so we will get back to you pretty quickly and uh definitely make sure to subscribe we'll be trying to put out some more tutorials on different aspects of the game um in one later this week hopefully i'll be putting out one about the galactic war characters so you guys can think about those and if you guys have any questions again make sure to post it in the comments and with that I am Finity from Real, Fifth, Real Sith of Genius, signing out.